It's good to be with you this evening for our service of darkness. We're going to do a song or two, and then we're going to do some readings and prepare our hearts for this, uh, this weekend. The events of this day and overnight is what you're going to be hearing. If you received a, uh, some sheets of paper today that may or may not have been delivered to you, the first thing on those papers says, Holy Communion. And uh, we're not actually going to receive communion this evening. Um, we're going to prepare and we're going to do that the week after Easter. I didn't warn you in advance about the new ways we're going to be doing these things. So we're going to be um, doing that in a week or two. So be prepared uh, and we'll talk more about that Sunday. But right now, let's sing a song. If you know the song, Lord, I Need You, sing it with us. If you don't, hum along or just listen.
Our second reading, Matthew 26, 31 to 35. Then Jesus told them, This very night you will fall away on account of me. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter replied, Even if all fall away on account of you, I will never, or I never will. Truly I tell you, Jesus answered, This very night, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. But Peter declared, Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. Our third reading. They went to a place called Gethsemane. And Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me. Yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Once more, he went away and prayed the same thing. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? Enough! The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Just sing the first verse in the chorus one time of Jesus Loves Me, Amazing Grace. Jesus loves me, for the Bible tells me so. Saved a wretch like me Once was lost but now I'm found Blind and now I see Hallelujah Oh Hallelujah Oh Hallelujah Oh Hallelujah Oh Hallelujah While Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. And Jesus replied, Do what you came for, friend. 
Then the man stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. With that, one of Jesus' companions reached for his sword, drew it out, and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Then seizing him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance. And when some there had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and had sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight. She looked closely at him and said, this man was with him, but he denied it. Woman, I don't know him, he said. A little later, someone else saw him and said, You are also one of them. Man, I am not, Peter replied. About an hour later, another asserted, Certainly this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. Peter replied, Man, I don't know what you're talking about. Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. John 18, 33 to 38. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea, Jesus asked, or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew? Pilate replied. Your own people and the chief priests handed you over to me. What is it you have done? And Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into this world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What is truth? retorted Pilate. With this he went out again to the Jews and gathered there and said, I find no basis for a charge against him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus who is called the Messiah? Pilate asked. They all answered, crucify him. Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, crucify him. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting. He took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. All the people answered, his blood is on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them, but he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified.
Jesus loves me, he who died, heaven's gate to open wide, he will wash away my sin, let this little child come in, t'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieve, how precious did that grace appear. Our I first believed, hallelujah, oh hallelujah, oh hallelujah, oh hallelujah, oh hallelujah. The soldiers led Jesus away to the place that is the Praetorium called, called together the whole company of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him, they twisted a crown of thorns and set it on him, and they began to call out to him, Hail, King of the Jews! Again and again they struck him on the head with a staff and they spit on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put on his own clothes, or put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. Finally, Pilate handed him over to be crucified. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. Here they crucified him with two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read the sign for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. The chief priests of the Jews protested to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but that this man claimed to be the King of the Jews. And Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them, one for each of them with the undergarment remaining. The garment was seamless, woven from one piece, top to bottom. Let us not tear it, they said. Let's decide by lot who will get it. That happened that the scripture might be fulfilled, which said... They divided my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. So this is what the soldiers did. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there, and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Dear woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that time on, the disciple took her into his home. Later, knowing that all was now complete so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. And with that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit.
Now it was the day of preparation, and the next day was to be a special Sabbath, because the Jews did not want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath. They asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. When the soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus, and then those of the other. But when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. The man who saw it has given testimony, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth, and he testifies so that you all also may believe. These things happen so that the scripture would be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And as another scripture says, they will look on the one they have pierced. Later, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly he feared the Jews. With Pilate's permission, he came and took the body away. He was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds. Taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it with the spices in strips of linen. This was in accordance with the Jewish burial customs. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. Because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. This concludes our service of darkness. We go from this time in darkness, knowing that it's sundown on what we call Thursday is when the Jewish calendar starts Friday. So on this night, the next night, and then Saturday night, Sunday, three nights, three days, and on that third day, we celebrate. So come back and join us on Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. In these days in between, read these scriptures again. Read the scriptures up to resurrection, but don't get there. Hang on, and we'll celebrate together Sunday. Contemplate everything Jesus went through in this process. It's why the candles are all out. It signifies Jesus has died and buried. But as we know, Sunday's coming. Hold on to that truth as we go tonight. Father, we thank you for this time of song, of scripture, of some imagery that helps us connect with you. May, Lord, we glorify you this day in your precious name. Amen and amen.